Morning guys, it's about 7 a.m. here on a uh, Thursday. Got a few things uh, I've been working on and I'm going to work on today. Let me show you what's going on here. So do you guys recognize this? This is the uh, red dot heater from the shelter. And the reason it's up there is because remember we were toting this around this oil filled heater I believe what happened is it slammed into it and gave it a hairline crack somewhere and it's been giving us some steady leaks while we're driving around so what I ended up doing is uh, finding a 12 volt version on eBay and then just swapping the guts out so I basically swapped the core out and uh, we haven't had any leaks since so I think that solved that problem. Got one more thing that I've been working on behind the scenes that I want to show you. So some of you have been commenting or complaining or acknowledging that our throttle pedals in these mechanical version 3116s they absolutely suck. Um, some of them get stuck at a certain position. Some of them won't go all the way to the return. To zero position which was the case with mine it's done that ever since I've got it no matter what I've done to try and fix it I always end up hooking my foot underneath the pedal to get it to go all the way down to zero so I got tired of that little game and I wanted to find a solution and so what you see here is a spring return hinge and this one's meant for a screen door on a house you get them in a pack of two they're less than 20 bucks and the tension on them is adjustable. So basically what I did is, believe it or not, the, the bolt holes in the hinge actually line up. All you have to do is hog them out a little bit. And uh, I, I tapped out the metric holes for quarter 20 so I could use grade eight hardware. Um, I removed the hinge section from the actual pedal. I just cut the pin on it and took that part off and then drilled one hole and used some grade eight hardware to attach it to the hinge. Um, it works extremely smooth now. I only have one spring on the um, throttle, throttle return on the governor. And this spring that's on here, I adjusted it so that it returns to zero every time and it is really smooth compared to the way it was before. So if you guys are looking to do some sort of an upgrade that will assist you with your pedal return and positioning, uh, I highly recommend this. I will leave a link down in the description as always for these hinges, they're pretty awesome. My friend Joey with Untamed Concepts has been coming up with some more um, stickers and safety things for the LMTV. He came up with this one because uh, people are constantly driving up next to me on the freeway and then slamming on their brakes and taking pictures and uh, they're not it's not really a blind spot but it just gets them out of this area because they block traffic if it's like a two-lane highway or something they slam the brakes on take pictures and they're, I don't know what they're doing but anyhow he made this sticker and he's making one for the other side too he wasn't sure if they would fit or not and then uh, I screwed up mounting the original one on the door, so he made me another one and I got that to uh, go on there a lot better. Uh, something he recommended for the cold weather or colder climate that we have here in Oregon is this Rapid Tac 2 to assist with uh, insulation of the vinyl and whatnot. This stuff works awesome. It'll allow you to position it and then as it dries, it actually turns into an adhesive. I tested it by spraying it on the old, uh, the old sticker there and uh, used a heat gun on it and it got real tacky as it dried. So that stuff is pretty awesome. Uh, let me show you what I want to work on today. Got a couple different things that are happening. I got a couple of uh, seat belt replacements off eBay these are made for a Humvee I have no idea if they are gonna fit our LMTVs but the one thing I do know is that it was less than 30 bucks for the pair so 
as always, I figured I'd give it a shot. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It's not that big a deal. But I think that's what we'll start with this morning. And then, the bigger project for the day. You see I've got some hose clamps and some stainless half-inch tees and some of this water line we use for our water tank. I have a secondary water tank coming today. Um, and like I told you guys before, when we were working on the rig and putting the initial water tank in there, there's plenty of room for another water tank. There's just a couple tabs you have to cut off the uh, um, cross members on the frame and it should go in there just fine. I took some measurements. So I ordered another one, I'm supposed to be here today. I don't know what time it'll get here. If it gets here too late, I won't finish it. But um, I don't have any more aluminum plates to mount that tank, but what I do have is this um, 3 16 steel flat bar. And I think I might make two or three of those to hold that water tank up in there. And let's see have to run to the hardware store and pick up a couple of half inch NPT male fittings that go to flare to, to tee into the existing tanks. Um, I think what we'll get started with is the seatbelt thing. I have no idea if it's going to work and uh, it may or may not work so it might be a total flop and uh, I got myself a free spare set of seatbelts for nothing but let's get started on that.
So the Humvee seat belts work out fine. And uh, they come with these hasps that you don't really need because the LMTV ones are a little bit longer. I suppose you could replace them if you wanted. Mine seem to be in okay shape, so I'll just hang on to those as spares. They're about four inches shorter on the Humvee versions compared to the LMTV versions. But everything on these lines up the way it's supposed to. Um, there's even a little tab that sticks into the, um, I don't know what you would call it, panel there. And uh, they work just fine. And the design looks almost exactly the same uh, aside from this little these little things. There's probably something on the Humvee that stops this from rotating back and forth like this. But, I mean, they work. And so now, no more green seatbelts. Got the black seatbelts. Let's move on to uh, the water tank setup. Okay. This is looking towards the front of the truck. Got the uh, original water tank in there. And then in this area... I want to mount the second water tank. The only thing it looks like I have to do is get rid of these. Uh, I don't even know what those were for. Some sort of a mount for something. Got to grind those off. And then uh, these mounts right here for all of the cables and everything. I'll have to relocate those. It looks like they got one on the other side. Um, I may or may not have to relocate those. It looks like I probably will. And then I may have to drop the drive shaft to get the tank into position. And then I'm going to run a couple of uh, pieces of flat bar across here to mount it. And it's a perfect height to press up against that cross member. So I'll get some uh, flat black you know, spray paint on that. Get all this stuff dialed in. And then we'll just wait for the FedEx guy to get here with the uh, tank and get it mounted. I already ran one of the hoses. Um, they, I only need to make two connections. One, one for the, the breather hose, and then this will be the um, uh, outlet hose. And then when you fill this tank, it'll balance with the other tank that I'm going to put up. So we should have 84 gallons of uh, water on board if everything works as planned. So fingers crossed. And... Uh, wait for the FedEx guy to get here and we'll get going on that all right got those brackets removed got those brackets removed and then I coated this with some rust-oleum and the brackets back there are removed too so basically the only thing I have to do is build those um, cut those flat bars and get those ready and then ultimately we'll have to drill a couple holes in the uh, C-channel use some half inch uh, grade 8 hardware to mount those straps up there and uh, that cross beam is mounted perfectly to press down on the center of the tank so I'll probably put you know a bar on opposite sides of the center beam uh, if I remember correctly it it compresses it half an inch which pinches it pretty good that's what happened on uh, this one but I had a big flat plate of aluminum to use and it's been just fine it's been working out great the reason I use the flat aluminum on this one is uh, it kind of protects it from the cold weather and then I also had to mount all my uh, components up here so like uh, my water heater and uh, I have my dump valve here to just dump both the tanks and then my uh, fill, fill uh, hose and everything so that worked out pretty good using the flat piece, piece of aluminum and I repurposed it but um, I gotta run to the hardware store and get some more of this hose and a couple of fittings for the tank when it arrives well I've done just about everything I can think of I made the uh, support straps out of some quarter inch flat bar and I got the holes pre-drilled in it so I basically all I have to do is uh, get the water tank up there put a couple cowboy clamps on it and uh, run some bolts through it I got all the uh, hardware set up I had to go into town because the local hardware store didn't have much it was about 
I don't know, 37 bucks for some fittings. I bought a couple of uh, brass tees, and then they didn't have any flare 90s, so I bought some PEX 90s, which will work just fine. And then I got all my hardware and everything else here ready to go, and the hose. So I'm basically waiting on FedEx to show up with the water tank. Like I said, hopefully they get here soon. I don't want this to turn into a it's 7 p.m. right now type thing. So waiting on them and then we'll continue the install. I could be wrong, but I think it's here. We'll get this in the garage. Here it is. About 15 and a quarter by 22 and a half by 27 and a half. Got half inch fittings here and then inch and a half fittings here that aren't punched out. So let's see if I'm gonna have to drop the drive shaft to get this in. I'm pretty sure I will have to do that, but I just want to see.
I got the tanks filling right now. Let's go underneath and check it out. <laughs> Those two straps worked out perfect. Fits in there perfect. I don't know why uh, more guys don't use these. These are like the perfect fit for LMTVs and they're only about, you know, 120 bucks shipped per tank. So I'm gonna let these fill up and uh, as you can see here right there that's the uh, that, that balances between the tanks so this is this line right here actually goes to the pump so when the pump turns on it'll pull from both tanks and then the breather line is tied in right there. I went, I went through the frame and tied the breather line in right there. So pretty easy mod. Time consuming to do a little bit of fabrication, but uh, with those heavy duty straps, I think everything's gonna be fine. And like I said, it, it, there's about a half inch flex, so it wedges it up against that, uh, that channel right there and uh, holds it in place pretty nicely so um, there's really nowhere for it to go if it tries to go forward it's going to hit this cross beam and then if it goes back it's going to do the same thing but this one that i put in hasn't moved an inch since i installed it uh, and i wedged it against the back of the um, crossbar here so I'll keep an eye on them, but I think that's probably going to be pretty good. The transfer between the two tanks was taking forever, so I added a uh, separate fill for this tank. It was pretty easy. I had enough fittings and spare parts sitting around to do it, but um, I added a fitting right there, and I sick of flexed it in. I basically pulled out a hole that was just... Uh, a bit smaller than the fitting and it makes its own threads when you drive it in with the, the Milwaukee uh, ratchet and then I had all the other fittings in the hose laying around so I just made that and then uh, hose hooks up directly to it I'll have to get a cap for that little hose section but it fills up a lot faster the transfer was taking forever so I didn't realize it was gonna do that 
Well, once it starts spitting out like that, that's it. The uh, tank is full, so. Everything works like it should now. Added that extra fill spout, so. It filled this container up really fast. See, it's all the way, it's all the way to the top. <laughs> It filled in every last inch of it. That's pretty neat. Um, I I wonder if I just filled this one, it would overflow into this one, and I wouldn't have to use that other fill spout that I normally use. Anyhow. Sits up there nicely. If you guys uh, learned something from this video, or you liked it, Give me a thumbs up. If you're not a uh, subscriber yet, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. But other than that, I'll catch you guys next time. See you later. Bye-bye.